Hey, it's me, Natasha Eileen, representing the Illumination Group, having the Advantage Business Series. I'm so glad to be with y'all today. I'm only going to give you a few minutes of some things that are awesome today to going to start our week off. Because um, you know I do a couple of videos per week. Um... So, again, I have my pins on for Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I lost my mom to cancer, so I am adamant about finding a cure, you know, because I know it's a cure out here, and we just got to keep believing God for that. So, we give God all the glory for the leaps and bounds of, of progression they have made for the cure of cancer, and we just know that it's going to be astonishing when people get to just beat this thing. We know that people have a 100% success rate on beating cancer, okay? So, again, I am the daughter of Ernestine and Robert Smith, one of the best, two two of the best entrepreneurs that I know. Um, like I said, they didn't do everything all the way right, but they were consistent with what they did, done. So, it it's taught me consistency as well, and um, I'm just going to keep swinging and swinging at it. And, you know, we know that success strategies bring success okay so today we've been talking about professional and personal development um, that's what having the advantage business series is all about you know your personal and professional development and we have to learn how to balance those two things out so we can always be progressive and productive okay so we do know those are two words we want to be progressive we want to be productive another P we need to add to that we want to be profitable so um, today's topic is we're going to talk about the topic that everyone stays away from, but I think we're going to tackle it a little bit. Normally I tackle it when we go into salon trainings, but you still got to tiptoe around it because people are so very sensitive when it comes down to this topic right here. Booth rental. Oh, that's a touchy, touchy subject, but it nevertheless... Um, it doesn't need to stay in the dark. It needs some illumination put to it so people can understand their responsibilities in the salon and understand the owner's um, perspective as well. So we got two perspectives that we're looking at here. Um, so, of course, we can't deal with that in five to six minutes, definitely. So I'm just going to touch on it a little bit um, and maybe part two of the video that I bring later on this week. We'll talk about it a little bit more and then we're going to hit and keep moving. Okay, so. Um, when you try to research the word independent contractor, because that's what a booth renter is, an independent contractor, when you try to research that word that I've been doing for years, um, uh, it's, it's no real specifics to that. It's like this definition that is so broad, it still leaves you being able to add more components to it. Okay, so that's where I think the real mix-up is. No one real, really has a real clear understanding of booth rental. They just know that the word independent contractor and booth rental synonymously means I'm my own boss. And you are um, because you're responsible for certain things. Now, I do have this one um, reference that I got off of LegalZoom, and I've had this for a while. And I like how they concluded theirs, and this is what it states. Certain factors will define a worker as an independent contractor. In every case, not relying on the business as the sole source of income. Comma. Working at his or her pace as defined by an agreement. Let's do slash contract. Being ineligible for employer to provide provided benefits, and retaining a degree of control and independence. That's one sentence. So you have a degree of control and independence. A degree of control and independence. Okay? While the independent contractor is his or her own boss, like we stated earlier, work stays within the definitions of oral or written contracts. Uh-oh. It stays within the definition of an oral or written contract and adheres to certain requirements. Okay, so let's take them two sentences. You said, I am my own boss. That's what the independent contractor kind of embodies. I am my own boss. But that second sentence, while the independent contractor is his or her own bo boss, comma, 
work stays within the definitions of oral or written contract and adheres to certain requirements. Okay, so if you know you come into an establishment and they gave you a contract to sign to be able to be a booth renter or independent contractor at that business, um, you signed that contract or that agreement or when they sat down and interviewed you because some people haven't progressed to that level of organizational structure where they do um, request you to sign a, a contract, which all businesses should because that's what when when you bring in things to a meeting like I said you kind of just highlighting stuff that you already have in your contract you're just not making up rules as you go that's that's not fair to anyone so with an oral or written contract it adheres to certain requirements so even if you are your own boss you came into this person's business and you said you were gonna adhere to certain requirements so even with you being an independent contractor this is this person's business so they have certain requirements of you to be able to work in that establishment as an independent contractor okay as an independent contractor an employee on the other hand relies on the business for steady income gives up elements of control and independence and is eligible for certain benefits and works within the constraint of the workplace. Okay, so you're not an employee, but you are an independent contractor. So that end of, we went right back up to that first sentence that say you're not relying on the business as your sole source of income. Okay, so a lot of people go into people's salons putting all the responsibility on the salon owner to generate um, business for them. It is some of the salon's requirement, but not all. Because as you fall into that independent contractor state, you are trying to do your own pace to get your own clients as well. So... You know, you got to be just as aggressive. They, The salon owner does have a obligation to you to some degree to, to have something like customer appreciation or a Christmas party or something like that to, to be able to open it up to your clientele to be able to come in and, and be able to network and have a social gathering to bring a friend to, to, you know, get acquainted with the business. But, you know, in those times and them gaps in between that you as the independent contractor, you have your own responsibility to yourself to generate customers. Okay. So we have established that now the booth run apart itself. We got to get into that. So I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. I'm, um, do a part two okay so right now we're doing part one so we understand that it's a broad definition of independent contractor because that's what you consider yourself as a booth renter so i want you to do some research on that yourself too and, and feel free to inbox me with some of your comments and concerns about the independent contractor um requirements or responsibilities or you know where you feel like you're in the gray yet Okay, now booth rental. If a salon owner decides to discount your booth rental to give you some time to pull it together, generate some people to come in, you know, um, that is very gracious of them, you know, because you got to realize they're taking away from their home and their business to to care about where you're going. You know, we said something. Um, a couple of weeks ago on a video I was saying about people investments. A lot of times people don't even know salon owners make a tremendous amount of people investments that they never get credit for or never get acknowledged for or never get honored for. Um, you know, some, some salon owners let you work for free until you pull it together. They, you know, they see where you're going and want to help you get there and, and know you want to believe in yourself and they believe in you too. Um, so, you know, what about that place when things, you know, when, when the owner has discounted your booth rent or, or even possibly let you work for free? A testament to that is, um, out of the 17 and a half years I owned the salon because I had to close down on my, like I told you, I lost my mom to breast cancer. Um, it's been a year and some change now. Uh, when, when they, my parents first started kind of getting sick, um, being a salon owner just didn't fit into the equation anymore. Um. 
clients were were not real understanding of me having to just stop work or just shut down immediately because I had to, you know, run and assist them. So I thought the wiser thing to do before I lost clients is just close down and go work somewhere else and try to balance all of that stuff out, you know, and still be able to preserve the clientele that I had. So um, that was that was a lot at the time, and I didn't know which way to go. Um, it was a rough time for me as a salon owner and um, being a salon owner for so long, for 17 years, and having to decide to close down and go work somewhere to play booth rent. But it put me in a servant posture that I hadn't been in for a long time because being an owner for 17 years, you know, I had to properly learn how to serve someone again. So it's been a wonderful experience um, to find out who I really am through that process. But um, out of the 17 years of owning, I tell everyone, I, you know, it's a great testament and honor that I can count on one hand how many times I've had problems with booth rent. That's not everyone's story. Everyone um, has um, some, some serious, serious stories about booth rent issues in their salon. Um, one thing I can say, like I said, out of them 17 years, I can count on one hand the problem I had um, with booth rent. And, you know, kudos to the people I've worked with through the years. You were awesome, um, especially when I deal with some of the things I have to go in and out of salons and here now. You know, um, the team was really, they were an awesome team and they did, they did great with booth rental. You know, so I know they have went off to be great salon owners. Okay, so... Um, when you have given a person discounted or free booth rent, okay, um, it's certain things that come along with that discount and, and, and prorated booth rent. Um, you know, it, it, it's called reciprocity. It's called, uh, bartering maybe, you know, um, if the salon, you do, you then become, you're still your own boss and can come and go as you please, but you still do have a certain obligation to that salon owner to be accountable to when you're coming. Because guess what? They're discounting that booth rent for you. So um, you not coming doesn't feel good to the owner. It doesn't feel good to the owner because even if you got to sit, if you can, you still need to make a commitment. I'm going to be here four hours or I'm going to be three, be here three hours. I understand it doesn't feel good. It just sits sometimes. And if everybody else in the salon is working, it kind of makes you feel a little kind of funny. But, you know, you got to put in your time. You got to put in, I tell people, you got to put in that sit time. Oh, yeah. That sit time. But find something fun to do because, you know, we had fun when we had sit time. You know, now everybody got so much stuff in their life. That sit time, they be like, I got to run out. I got to go pay this. I got to go do this. I got to go pick up this. I got to go drop off this. Gotta go this. You're like, whoa, it's too much going on. Too much in and out. That interference alone can, can hurt your clientele as well. So, look, that's just some real quick stuff. I went 13 minutes. Okay, so I got to cut this one off. I'm coming back with part two. Uh, a little later, okay? So, marinate on the stuff I talked about. I want you to Google some uh, and do some research on some independent contractor stuff and see what you come up with. Um, I'll be back um, before the day is over with part two of this so you can start your work week off awesome, okay? And and, and kind of pull some things together so your work week is, is going to be, you're going to come, you're going to have a new mindset when you go into this work week, um, boo friend. You're going to have an appreciation for the salon owner. Especially if she's discounting or he's discounting your booth rent, you know, to just see it happen for you. You're going to have a different perspective this week, okay? So, I'm going to come back with part two a little later on, okay?